people with ADHD.
Hello everybody, welcome to tonight's stream. So, as you can tell, I have a brand new setup, I have a brand new camera. I look fancy, it's cold outside, I got a warm cup of coffee. I feel great. But, as promised, we do have some exciting things to do tonight. We're not going to do critiques this week, just because I wanted a little bit of a break, mental breather. Because giving critiques is kind of... It takes a lot of mental energy to do a lot of critiques, and so this week I was like, you know what, I really just want to do, like, some just, like, animating. I've really been craving animating because I've been doing certain kind of things at work that are really fun, and I love what I'm doing at work, but it's not exactly, like, stylized cartoony stuff, so I wanted to do some more stylized animation tonight and maybe do some previs and stuff for some promo stuff for our rig. So, with all that... Let me pour myself a cup of coffee, and then we'll get right into it. Uh, got my fancy French press. Also, pray some you're gonna you're gonna appreciate this. Uh, my mug says, "Bake it to a cube." Uh, let me double check my audio real quick. Let me see. Um, wait, wait, can, can you, you hear me now? now? How's, How's my, my audio? audio? One second. I realized I was, realized I was talking... talking. That's what it was. Okay, apologies for that. Apparently, my camera has a mic <laughs> and it was picking up my camera audio. So I muted my camera, I turned back on my mic and we should be good to go. That was really confusing. Yeah, basically what it was was that I accidentally muted my mic when it, before I started the stream and then I was just talking and you guys couldn't wouldn't have been able to hear me but my camera picked up a mic, so apparently. My new camera has a mic, but that's muted. Audio should be crystal clear now. Cool. But back to what I was saying is uh, I have a bake it to a cube mug. So that's what I'm going to be drinking out of tonight. But let's see. First things first, what do I want to get into? Screen share one. Boom. Uh, the key, the cup, uh, it was given to me by a friend of mine. So it was, I think it was custom made, but there's a good chance we will be putting that together and maybe giving a link for people to go buy it because the cube cult is starting to grow and we want the merch. So maybe in the future, short future, we'll have a bake it to a cube cup that everyone can buy. But with that, we have a working, beautiful, amazing new rig. He's getting close. I would say he's probably about 80% done. We still have some polishy things, some tweaks, some controls we wanna add. But as of right now, as you can see, he's got a lot of fancy controls. He's moving real fancy, real nice. He's got a nice squashy squashy spine his facial controls are chef's kiss you got a lot of room to play with the squashiness of this character he's got really nice z depth control here i love the z depth he's got some nice inflate controls Overall, I, I would say I, I am beyond happy with this rig. Like, it is so buff as a rig. Like, literally, it can do anything I want it to. We got really nice eye controls, nice blink.
He's got really solid eyebrows. Lots of flexibility with the brows. We get some nice creases. Also, if you take the this control, turn Geo to nope. Yeah. Nope. Normal. There we go. Now we can select it. I, I like turning on smooth mesh preview for my rigs. Even though it makes them slightly slower, you just get a lot better deformations. But look at them creases, them beautiful creases. Hello, Nahim. You got real nice ear controls. Yeah. Still a work in progress, still adding things, still refining things. But today, basically, I'm going to be working on a couple things. I'm going to try to previs out a quick shot that I'm trying to do for promotion for this rig that I'm going to release out to the public once it's done. I'm also going to try to do a couple generic phonemes for this character just so I can maybe practice a little bit of a lip sync test just to see how I like his mouth controls because I've done some poses, done some... Uh, I've done some poses, I've done like a small walk cycle and stuff like that, but until you really get into the animation, you really don't see some of the nitpicky issues that are with this rig. So, yes, the control system is very similar to AM rigs, obviously, because we, we all went to AM. And kind of the emphasis was on a simple character with simple controls that are extremely advanced. And what I mean by that is that, yeah, there's only one control for the mouth corner when a lot of rigs have two, three, four, but it's flexible. And there's Z depth, which a lot of rigs don't have. There are, let me turn on my Animbot so I can have my hotkeys. Can you show how to balance pose? Can, can you please expound on that, Nahim, about balance pose? All the controls are scalable, which gives you a little more fine tuning with your posing. And the main difference between this rig and what we would, you'd say like AM rigs, which is what the layout is very similar to. It's not exactly, I believe there's another couple rigs that we also uh, base this off of. But um, one of the main ones was the Yulon rig because it's the same rigger, but it's very similar to the Yulon rig as well. But one of the main differences between this and the AM rigs is the AM rigs are very blend shape heavy, very locked controls. You can hit it to a certain point. You can't go past that, which very much limits you as an animator to getting these very pushed expressions. But with that, I think I'm going to start off. I have a couple assets I want to download. I want to try and put together like a proxy scene, maybe go over my process for like creating a scene for a shot because I do like making things look pretty. I do like going roughing in some cameras, very previs background. I may try to do some of that today if I have time. I'm also gonna try to do some generic phonemes. And I may even try to animate a quick lip sync test just to test out the animation. So one of the big things we need to add next is we do not have a tongue as of yet. So he does not have a tongue. But we'll see, what do I wanna do for a first mouth pose I'll probably just start out with a generic AH possibly Pratham I have an auto so I can any rig I balance pose accordingly to camera only but when I see in all directions it looks not good and pose is not balanced by weight and all principles. Okay, so what you're talking about, uh, Nahim, is something that's very important. There are animators out there that will only look at your shot cam and will only pose to the angle. So for example, if you had a pose like this, it's like from this view, it's like, oh, this is imbalanced because the base of the neck is in line with 
the center of the feet. But when you go over here, you're like, oh, that is not in balance at all. That is way out of balance. So a good rule, what I do all the time, this is how I animate every shot ever, is let's say I have my shot cam. And let's say my shot cam is at relatively this angle. My shot cam is gonna have only polygons turned on and it's gonna be locked. So I can't move the camera. This is my locked camera. This is where I'm animating from, but I have no controls and I do not animate from this view. This is just for viewing and everything else I'm going to animate from this perspective view. So if I need to create a pose, I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna say, okay, I want this. Maybe I want him to lean forward a little bit. And then I'm like, okay, I need to rotate here, rotate here to get him to stay in balance, etc., etc. So that's kind of the simple answer to your question is just have both cameras open at all times. Have your shot cam, have your perspective and always be posing and looking at your poses from your perspective, but posing to your shot cam. So you look at the shot cam, you say, is that pretty? You're like, yeah, this is really, really pretty pose. Then you go back to your perspective and you say, does this work? Because no matter what you do, if your pose doesn't work in the perspective view, you're going to have to cheat. And cheating means hardship 90% of the time. If you're cheating something when you don't have to, you're wasting time as an animator. As an animator, your job is to only cheat if you have to and if it serves a purpose. If it does not serve a purpose, do not cheat. Do not have a character out of balance if it doesn't have to be. If there's a reason for it, if you're doing something dynamic, if you're doing something cartoony and there's a reason for cheating something, then do it. But if you're just cheating it because it's just happening and you're not paying attention or whatever, make sure you're not cheating because it will cause extra work. The quickest way to animate something is to do it properly in the perspective cam while also making sure your poses are appealing in the shot cam. So small little answer. It's not unless I'm understanding the question wrong. It's not a hard, it's not a advanced thing. Um, to remedy, it, it's literally just looking at your shot poses in the shot cam and making sure that they work. So. Let's see, first things. So whenever I'm making uh, phonemes, let's say I'm gonna animate a shot and I'm like, okay, I like to save time when I'm animating because I don't like wasting my time on things. <laughs> I like to get to the parts that I like a lot that I find really, really fun in the animation process. Everything else I try to do as quickly and as perfectly as possible so I can spend all my time on the aspects that I like. So for me, whenever I'm animating a shot, I don't like moving all these controls around to get my poses. I just like refining them to fit the angle and getting these appealing shapes in my poses. So. If you're doing an M pose, like a M, mm, no matter what angle your character's at, let's say it's at this angle, right? Or it's at this angle, or maybe it's a straight on front view. No matter where you are, the lips are gonna need to be sealed. So let's just, for example, real quickly, let's just close the jaw, boom. No matter what angle, this reads, this can read as an M pose. What I would like to do for all imposes is add a little bit of roll to get it in like this. So like, mm, mm, you know, but depending on what angle depends on which way I want to push it. So for me, when I'm going to do lip sync, I want to create generic, boring phonemes that just get me the base of what I need. So then I can go in and refine it. And I also want to use as least amount of controls as possible to get those base phonemes. That way, when I go to refine, I'm not having to counter animate a bunch of different controls. So I essentially, I build my own pose libraries pretty much on a shot by shot basis so that whenever I go in, I can slap phonemes in, get the base reading of my lip sync and then refine them, which again, as I talked about last week, this would be after I do a jaw pass. So, I mean, let's just start out with a basic impose. So 
Let's go ahead and get rid of this shot cam because I don't need it. Let's go back here. Yeah, so for me, I actually got a job before I finished AM. And it was kind of a thing of pure luck in that I had a studio that was two hours away from me. That was a very low, low, low budget studio. And it was very, very desperate for animators. And they couldn't pay very much. The, the pay wage was very, very low. And so people out of state couldn't afford to move in to work there. So I wasn't a great animator. I didn't have a very stellar demo reel. I had gone through class five, I believe. I had finished class five. And I was also working part time. I didn't have a lot of money. I wasn't able to take class six because I didn't have the money for it. And so I was planning on taking a break from AM to build up enough money to take class six. And so I just started looking around. I was like, hey, are there any studios near me that I could apply to that I could work at to get enough money to pay for class six and finish out the term? So I looked around and I randomly fell upon this small studio two hours from where I live and they were hiring. So I sent out my reel, I applied, I had a phone interview and they were like, you're hired. It was very, very low wage. If I was offered that same deal again, I probably would not take it because it was so low and I had to travel 45 minutes to work every day. But it was a great experience because it forced me to learn how to animate fast. I, I, I actually work with one of my coworkers from that studio now at Luma. And we were both talking today. We were laughing at that. That studio, that my very first studio, is where Bake It to a Cube began. <laughs> That's where I learned how to bake things to cubes. I learned about rotation order switching. Because I was forced to animate 600 frames a day, 700 frames a day. It was garbage animation, terrible. I wouldn't put any of it on my reel, but it forced me to cut corners. It forced me to speed up parts of my workflow that were really slow and inefficient, and it made me a really fast animator. So after I finished working there, I worked there for six months. I animated on three films, very low budget films. I probably animated about 200 shots in six months, VFX shots. And then after that, all the projects were finished up. So they downsized their team and let go all but like two animators. So after that, I got let go. I had enough money to pay for class six. I had a, enough money to buy a PC, which was the PC that I bought because I was animating on a laptop <laughs> up until then. And so after I finished up that, I went back home, I took class six with Sean Sexton. I finished out class six and well, week, I guess eight of class six. I, I was working on my class six shot. It was a 600 frame, three character shot. I was on a good pace to finish it, but Cynthia actually got an email from a guy named Hunter Schmidt. <laughs> and he was like, hey, we're looking for animators for this cool new game for Sony. And we were wondering if you'd be interested. Well, Cynthia was working at Jellyfish. And so she sent it out to me and a couple of my friends and was like, hey, I can't take this job, but if any of you guys are interested, send him your reel. I was like, oh, that's so cool. I'm in class six. I'll send it to him once I'm done with this assignment. You know, I wasn't, I was thinking it would be cool, but I wasn't really paying attention and I forgot about it. One of my friends had applied and she got an interview and she got hired. And whenever she got hired, Hunter asked her, was like, hey, do you have any other friends who'd be interested? And so she messaged me and was like, hey, where's your reel? I want to send it to, send it to Hunter. So she sent it to Hunter for me. And he emailed me back and was like, hey, I want to have an interview with you. So I had an interview and it was for Cana Bridge of Spirits. <laughs> and so I got hired on there. Worked there for 15 months. As we all know, Kana's out. It's a great success, big hit. We are actually going to be having a Q&A with Hunter on the 20th. So next Saturday, we are going to be having a Kana Bridge of Spirits Q&A on stream with Hunter Schmidt. So me and Hunter are going to be basically talking about 
making Kena. So that's going to be amazing because Hunter is one of the coolest, most chill dudes I've ever met. Really, really good friend and just awesome animator, awesome artist, super, super talented. So studio is intern now, slow in animation. I took time more than assigned man days. So for you, Nahim, I'll, I'll answer this and I'll go back a little bit more to my story. It depends on what studio you're at. So there's kind of two different paths you can take as a first animator. If you get hired to a big studio whose emphasis is quality. So I remember one of my mentors saying that he got hired on at Blue Sky and he was a junior animator, one of his first jobs. And it didn't matter what deadline they set for him. He said, my goal is to make this the best shot I can. So even if I take over the deadline, they want quality from me. They know I'm not gonna be fast right out of the gate. So my goal is to make this the best shot ever because if I continue to make really good shots, I will get faster over time with repetition because the studio's emphasis was quality. So he put his emphasis on quality and that's what made him successful at the studio. And as he continued to put out quality shots, he got faster just by repetition. My story was a little bit different in that I showed up to the studio and the studio's emphasis was deadline. They didn't really care about quality. It was basically TV animation and what they needed was to meet deadlines. Shot quality, movie quality <clears throat> wasn't as big of a deal as it was speed. So I looked at the studio and I said, what can I do to best help this studio? Can, do I, should I take extra time to make these shots super, super nice? And then my shots are going to stand out above everybody else's and kind of look weird because it's super polished and none of the other pro shots are polished. Or can I just get to a passable quality really, really, really fast and get a bunch of shots done so we don't miss our deadline? So I looked what helps the studio the most, and that's how I made my decision to work on speed over quality. So if you're an intern and your studio's emphasis is on quality, then if you're taking longer than the deadline to make sure you get the quality they want, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. If your studio's emphasis is on speed and you're taking longer, then you might want to look into how can I speed up my workflow because you know it's more on emphasis on speed than quality. Again, it's what helps the studio, not what helps you. Because if you go into a studio thinking, how is this studio going to help me? you're going to be let down because studios aren't hiring you to help you. They're hiring you to pay you money so they give, you give them quality animation. So if your studio's work is on more on quality, then focus on quality. Speed is not a big uh, factor. Now, you obviously always want to be looking to get better in every aspect you can, but I would say focus your main uh, attention on quality and then secondarily focus on speeding up your workflow and if you want some, a couple tips on how to speed up your workflow is find small things within your workflow that take a ton of time that don't give you a lot of benefit and find ways to do them just as good quicker so something that plagues all animators is gimbal lock gimbal lock messes up every animator's workflow if it's left unchecked because rotations all converge together they mess up your curves and if you can't have curves you have to hardball frame by frame your animation to make sure it looks nice and anytime you frame by frame animation it takes way more time than it should and oftentimes the animation does not look as fluid as it should so my first thing when becoming a faster animator was how can i remove gimbal lock how can i get rid of gimbal lock and that took me into rotation orders, baking to a cube, using temporary controls during different parts of my shots to animate certain motions so I could have multiple rotation orders on the same control so I could get the perfect motion and perfect graph at all times. Other things were overlap. Overlap takes a lot of time. It's something that adds a lot to a shot but doesn't really make or break a shot. So how can I do overlap quicker without losing a lot of quality. 
So there's constraint methods, there's the overlapper tool if you're working professionally, there's copy curve method, you know. Another thing was how do I animate subtle acting shots very, very quickly. And I, I started using the layered method. I started playing around with it of copying my curve from the head to the body. And if you do it the right way, your quality shouldn't take a massive hit. But if you try to rush into becoming fast too quickly, you're gonna cut corners in places you shouldn't and your animation quality is gonna suffer. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that answers your question about speed. Um, yeah. That's, that's basically my main tips for how to animate faster and wh wh what kind of a mindset you should have going into a studio. But <clears throat> then to finish my, uh, to finish my story, I worked on Kena for 14 months, finished, finished it up. Meanwhile, while I was working on Kena, I believe I took two classes at Kyoso just because I wanted to continue to push myself, continue to learn. Um, after I finished up on Kena, I had a kind of sketchy studio reach out to me, offer me a really cool position, really good pay. They kind of led me on for about four or five months, promising that I would start and then delaying it, just ghosting me. They finally gave me a start date and then after some weird things of them not wanting to pay me money, they just dropped me. So right after they dropped me, I was trying to make Leo and I was needing a little bit of extra capital to fund this rig because I'm <clears throat> funding this rig all on my own, hiring artists and paying them industry wages to make this because I want as an artist, I want people to be paid fairly. So I reached out to a friend of mine, Chad, who's a supervisor at Day for Night. I was like, hey, you guys hiring? He was like, yeah, we're hiring. So I went and worked at Day for Night for about four months working previs, which honestly was an amazing experience because it taught me a lot about composition, camera movement, storytelling beats, help you get clarity within motion, how to make something read to a director with no facial, no body animation, you know. A lot of really important stuff I learned in previs, all the while I was working on making Leo, our rig. And then after Day for Night, I heard that Luma was hiring and so I just sent them my reel. I immediately got a call back. They were like, hey, we want to get you an interview. I had an interview with them. And I moved from day for night to Luma about three, four weeks ago. And I've been working there ever since. So that's kind of my story from AM is I managed to get my foot in the door. Kind of out of pure luck of being right next to a studio that was hiring. And since then, I've just constantly been trying to improve myself while working because it's very easy to become complacent while you're working at a studio of being like, oh, I worked an eight hour day. You know, I'm just going to relax after work, which is good if your mental is suffering, if your body's suffering, you need to take rests. But it's also important to continue to improve yourself because some of my best shots were done while I was working on Kena or while I was working at Day for Night, while I was working at Luma. I'm doing some of my best work out there and some real shots that got me these jobs. And had I just sat back and worked my jobs, I may have not gotten the next one because I wasn't improving my reel while I was doing it. So <clears throat> if you get in the job in the industry, Try to continue to push yourself, continue to learn, continue to improve your reel because it will pay off with getting steady jobs after that. So, <clears throat> With that, let's get back to a little bit of posing. So what I'm going to focus on when I'm making a pose library is essentially the middle of the mouth because mouth corners are for expression and appeal. So if I'm doing an M pose from this angle, I may have the lip, you know, more here because I really want to get that M to read. If I'm doing an M pose from the front, maybe the M is going to be more like this, right? Because I want to get a more tight appealing front lip pose, right? 
it's all dependent on your camera angle. And I want to make I want to make phonemes that I can use at any camera angle and just tweak them after I paste them. So I'm not going to pay a lot of attention. I'm going to pay a little bit of attention to the mouth corners, but the main thing I'm wanting to do is to create quick and easy middle mouth shapes for all of my phonemes, teeth, tongue, all of those things, so that I can plug them into any camera angle and then be able to just tweak and get a peel out of those. So for the first one, I'm gonna do an M pose. Obviously, I'm gonna leave the jaw at default. Also, another thing I like to do is layouts to panes side by side. I like to go to my orthographic front view and I like to go here just so like I can take a nice, clean, pretty looking snapshot for my studio library. So, so first things first for my M pose, I'm just gonna do a little bit of roll here I also think about what my shot is going to be, if it's going to be a happy shot or sad shot. This shot is going to be a little more sad. And so I'm going to, I'm going to curtail all these lips, uh, phonem shapes to be a little more sad, just slightly. So, I mean, this is a solid M shape. I may add a little bit more roll. Maybe add a little bit of upper lip puff, lower lip puff. There we go. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a selection set to select all of the mouth so it makes it easier for me to figure out what I'm gonna save as a pose library. The second thing I do is I do not save the jaw as a pose library phonem because again, I do a jaw pass before my phonem. So it doesn't really make sense for me to save the jaw out because I will already have the jaw animated before I ever put phonems in. So. I'm going to just select these. I'm going to select these controls. We do have a picker. Um, it's not ready yet. I personally don't use pickers. We are going to have a picker for this character. Um, yeah, me personally, I prefer just selecting Geo inside of the viewport, but I know a lot of people who do like pickers, and I want that to be an option for this character. So we are going to have, I believe, MG picker, maybe Anim School picker, both, but we will have pickers for this character. And we do have one already, but we may want to optimize it a little bit. So... Okay, so I have all my controls selected. I'm gonna deselect the jaw because I don't want that one. I do not want the squash and stretch jaw. Okay, there we go. So we have the controls selected. I'm gonna to go to pose library. create a new folder, call them phonemes. Okay, so I'm just going to add pose. I'm gonna call this MBP because this will be an MB or a P. For Bs and Ps, I'm gonna add a lot more puff, but I wanna do that, kind of sweeten it to taste. So click that. Okay, so that's a little bit too high and low. I wanna zoom this in just a little bit more just so I can get a really nice, like just mouth pose in the picture. And that works. So now I'm gonna lock this so that I can use it for all the different phonemes. 
So I'm going to save that. Now we have an MVP pose that I can use for my lip sync. So next, oh uh, shoot, I also need a selection set. I'm going to call this mouth. I also want a default mouth pose. So let's go ahead and default that out. Phonum pose. I'm going to call this default picture save. Cool. So now we're going to let I've got an MVP. Let's just go ahead and create an FV pose. Hey, share animal. So we've got solid FV pose. So let's go ahead and just save this. V. Also, give me one second, guys. I need to go turn off my heater because it's turning on and it's kind of hot in here. So I will be back in one second. Let me... Boom. There we go. Be right back. So now we have our FV pose, we have our MBP, and let's move on to the next. The next pose I will probably do. Shows that I need to fix a couple of these. There we go. Next pose that I'll do is probably an S pose. What particular shape are you referring to? This one? Oops. What's up, Madison? Yes, what is your petty request? So for um, FV poses, Pratham, you kind of have to. So for like, if I'm going to say like van, van, or fan, or uh, what's another word that starts with V, like victorious, or 
vampire. In order to get that, like, v, you kind of have to put your lower lip. Yes. Yes, I will. There you go. Are you happy now? <laughs> Thank you. But no, for for F and V poses, Pratham, I try to make those read quite well. So depending on the angle, like I said, I'm going to tweak these per angle, what my shot's going to be. Yes, it is very petty, Madison, but I will do it. Um, depending on what angle, I'm going to push it one way or the other. I might tone it down. I might make it more exaggerated. It's also going to be depending on what word's being said. But... I wouldn't say this is super pushed because, you know, you kind of have to like van or vampire, you know, if there's, there's quick ones where it's like caravan, right? Caravan. If I slough over the V, I'm going to maybe go like here where it's like there. But if I'm starting with a V or an F, like fun, like, right, I'm going to tuck that lower lip underneath the teeth. So. I would say it's maybe a little exaggerated, but not too bad because I want to be able to tweak it either way, depending on where it's going to be in my shot. So next I'm going to, so I'm going to go ahead and, hmm, what do I want to do next for a phonem? I've got my FV, I've got my MVP. Oh yeah, I'm going to do an S pose. So for an S, I'm going to try to go relatively Taco 2 is Madison. I have revealed her secret identity. Taco 2 is in fact Madison. So this is a little bit rough of an S shape, but it's good enough because again, I'm gonna cheat my S shapes a lot depending. Hey Danish, so this is not an AM rig. Um, and it's not necessarily based off of the uh, AM style. It's very similar. I believe the rigger that rigged our rig knew and worked with the rigger that rigged some of the AM rigs. And I believe some of the DreamWorks rigs as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's the same rigger that rigged the Yulon rig, if you know what that rig is. But it is a very similar size style. We, I mean, obviously me, Madison, Cynthia, Taylor, Robert all went to Animation Mentor. So we prefer a more simplistic style. You know, obviously some of the controls are relatively the same looking of like the square eyes, you know, corners, all of that. The rigging... Makes sense the shapes of the curves and same. Yeah, exactly. We we I very much like the layout of this rig because it's simple but very, very buff. So yes. So I would good so I would call this S shape good enough for now. Just because again, all of these shapes I'm gonna be pushing later on. So pose, save, save. 
now let's do open mouth expression a h Real quickly, I'm going to go back to default because I forgot to snapshot mirror settings. There we go. Now I should be able to mirror things properly. So typically for lip syncs, uh, for lip sync, I try to, one second, let me make sure my stream is working fine. Cool. So for lip sync, I typically like to have a ah kind of a pose of like the corners up and the mouth open. I also like to have an ah type of pose and then a ooh. So those are basically my three open mouth poses I like to save, so. Just a little bit. Roll this one just a little bit. And that's a good enough AH because most of the time I will be blending on the AH. So I'm going to have the mouth where I want it and I'm just going to blend it on and then uh, tweak it. So. This is gonna work as an AH pose, pose, boom. So now let's go to a ah kind of a pose. This is almost what I would call a precursor to an ooh pose. I don't like, there we go. It's a little bit too. The Blood War, thank you for following. Appreciate that. It's a little too much. It's too much roll. That should be good enough OH pose for now. Now I'm going to 
gonna try to make an oo pose, which oo poses for me are always very tricky. Because it feels like you kind of have to do them different per rig. So I'm hoping that this rig is a lot easier to pose oo shapes with. But we'll see. Pushed a little bit out. Like to rotate this a little bit. It's pushed a little bit too far. I'm actually really happy with the flexibility of this ooh shape. I do not know why that's not selected, but add selection. Cool. So this is a good enough ooh shape for now. And so this, this is essentially what I have here is what I'm going to do every shot. And this is, these are all going to be depending on what the mood of the shot is, whether the character is happy, sad, etc. I'm probably going to do one more AH pose really quickly because I realized I didn't do one that had essentially just AH pose with AH pose with an underside like this. And good enough for now. Cool. So this is basically what I'm going to start with whenever I do any kind of lip sync. So Next, what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and just hit new scene. I may not get to the lip sync tonight, so I'm just gonna show these. 
maybe what I'll spend the rest of the stream doing is setting up a scene for the shot I'm gonna do. So give me one second, I'm gonna try and extract a couple files I downloaded earlier. Cool, cool. Cool, cool, okay. Import. Okay, so I found this cute little house on Sketchfab. Gonna delete the directional light, and it is a mess. <laughs> Most Sketchfabs are. So I'm just going to go through and clean this real quick. R underscore geo. Let's hope and pray we have good texture. Oh, look at that. We have good solid textures already. Cool. So this works. So we've got the car. I'm going to go ahead and put this into a group. I'm going to call this group group. I'm going to call this, what's this? Underside. I'm just going to combine these. Combine. I'm going to call this ground geo. Delete by type history. I'm going to move this inside. All the rest of this geo, as far as I'm concerned, well, let's just get the house geo. It's a lot of invisible. Very strange, very strange. Well, I'm not going to need. What's the best way to go about this? That is a lot of geo. You know what? I'm just going to do it. Select all of it. Mesh. Combine. Edit. Delete by type history. And I'm just going to call this house underscore set underscore geo. Put this in here. Delete this oops and let's just group this and call it house Cool. So we have a cute little set here. I should uh, create a project. Uh, let me get to that prism. Give me one second. save this as an asset. Call this house.
So how, Pratham, how are you uh, blocking your subtle shot? And do you have it anywhere? I can I, I can give generalized notes, but it'd probably be easier if I was giving more specific notes to your shot. So let me check here real quick. Okay, so my tips for blocking the body on a subtle shot is don't set too many keys and do not, um, don't set too many keys is the one. The second one is do not, um, what's the word? Move the character around too much, right? So if you have your reference, right, and the character is moving left, right, left, right, find the extremes that the character's moving. So if he's here and then he's like, hey, what you doing, right? There's no reason to do one, two, three, four, five, six key pose as is the bodies are moving. Have one here and then have a key here. And then once you have this pose and this pose, set those poses to spline let the let maya in between and then match your your in between pose to match your reference right cuz if you're here and you're here most of the rotations in your body are going to work relatively nice with maya's in between what's not going to work is the shoulders the arms the head the neck all of that so maybe you have to like favor the, your first pose right so if you have a pose here and he goes to here maybe 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 this pose is on frame 10 this frame is on this is on frame 30 right so you go right in the middle and you have frame 20 and you have this nasty maya in between because you flipped it to spline you set a key and then from there you go in and pose and match your reference because then yes you're making your in between specific you're not letting maya animate for you but you're letting Maya move the unimportant controls for you that you would have probably forgot to do. Because if you're in stepped here and you try to move every single control to hit this in between, there's going to be some controls that you miss or some controls that you over rotate and you end up with this janky poppy animation that goes from here to here, right? It kind of goes like boom, 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 right? So, that's my advice for animating a subtle shot is use your reference, match your reference, and but find what is important in your body, right? If I'm sitting here and I'm playing a video game and I'm like, what are you doing? What's the important part of that shot? Well, it's the head, right? The body's not doing much. If your body is moving around like this, that's gonna distract from the important part of the shot, which is your head. So if I'm gonna animate a shot where the important bit is the head moving, I'm gonna make sure that I block my keys based on what the head is doing. So I'm gonna block a key here, block a key here as my two key poses, and then maybe I'm gonna hit an in-between so he's like, what are you doing, right? So it's one, two, three, po three poses. The body, I'm just gonna be like, okay, these are the three key poses I set for the head. Okay, what is the body doing whenever the head does that? And so let's say the body is here, it hits here, and then it goes here, right? Well, the in-between for here is probably gonna be relatively linear because I'm not gonna be doing like here, here, and then here. The body's not gonna be doing this big weird thing. It's literally gonna move from point A to point B, right? The body's gonna be moving from here to here, while the head, which is what's the point of the shot, is going here, here, and here, right? So you get all this nice, interesting animation on the head, and all the point of the body is to make sure it doesn't distract from what the head's doing, and it feels like it's working with the head. So hopefully that makes sense. 
I kind of just rambled on for a little bit, but basically it's just find out what your what the audience is going to look at. Make sure you put all your time and information on that and make the rest of the body work with that part of the body. So, yeah, no problem. Okay, so I've got this guy. Now I'm going to... Try to import another guy. Oops, that's kind of a cool tree. So for context here, really quickly, Where's the newest one? Sort by... Can we not have date? Okay, this is the one. Let me turn off the music. Okay, so this is the audio for the test shot I'm gonna be doing for our new rig. Let me know if you guys can hear this. Okay, nope, let me turn this on. Oh, I am not showing my screen. Sorry about that. I need to find out why my audio is not playing on Maya. That's probably why. Okay, let me know if you can hear this, guys. I've never seen anything so perfect. <sighs> then you whispered that you loved me. <laughs> but I guess if I love you I should let you move on cool so that's the audio that I'm going to be that's the audio that I'm going to be animating it's just going to be a test shot just to test out the rig um, so my idea is which I'm going to have to figure out because it's a very very rough idea but um, if you listen to the audio, which again, this is a little bit as to my idea process, this is how I kind of come up with ideas, right? So I found this audio, I kind of edited it together to be relatively quick. And then let me just play it again so you guys can hear it. I've never seen anything so perfect. <sighs> then you whispered that you loved me. <laughs> but I guess if I love you. I should let you move on. Sorry, well, what do you mean by transcript, Pratham? I'm not sure what you mean by transcript, but... Uh, I do not believe I have subtitles for the audio. Does Twitch have? Oh, um, I don't know if Twitch has a subtitles or closed captioning for streaming. I'm not sure. I've never seen anything so perfect. <sighs> yeah, so essentially what he he's saying he here me. is he... It's a guy talking to a girl, and he's saying, I've never seen anything so perfect. Uh -oh. Then you whispered that you loved me. <laughs> but I guess if 
for I love you. I should let you move on. So basically he's saying he's talking to a girl that he likes and he's like, I've never seen anything so perfect. I had I thought I, I thought to myself I had to have you or I'd die. And then you whispered to me that you loved me. But if I love you, I'm gonna have to let you move on. So it's kind of him like coming to terms with the fact that they can't be together and so he's gonna have to let her go because he cares for her. And so kind of the way that I was coming up with this idea is, do I want this character directly talking to someone? Or I do I want this character to be inadvertently like talking to someone without actually speaking to their face, right? So like I, I was coming kind of weighing two ideas in my head. I was like, okay, one, this guy is actually talking to the girl and they're staring face to face with each, other, with each other. Maybe they're walking home from school. Maybe they're riding in a car together. Maybe they're at like a ball. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madison. That's the line. So I was thinking, okay, there's two broad overarching ideas that I can go with. And depending on those two big ideas, I can do a hundred different ideas based off those two, right? That's how I come up with ideas. That's how that works for me is I think broad terms first. Okay, with this audio, what am I going to do that's broad? And then once I come up with that broad idea of what I want with the shot, then I go more specific and then more specific and more specific. And I layer in ideas and I switch between different ideas until I get with what I want. And so originally my idea was, okay, he could be talking, he's talking to something that he loves, but it doesn't have to be a human. It could be an animal. So I was thinking about maybe it's a dog that's sick or maybe it's an animal that's sick. And I thought about that. It was a little too dark for me. So I ended up not going with the dying dog idea. <laughs> but I was like, okay, I kind of like the idea of him talking to someone he loves, a girl that he loves. And so I was thinking, okay, he can either be rehearsing the line to himself right he can be planning to tell her that he's breaking up with her because he wants her to be able to move on that's one option second option is he can actually be talking to the girl third option he can be talking to the girl in his head but he's not actually talking to her maybe he's like he's saying the words so that he can come to peace with that with the situation himself right so maybe, for example, he's, she's broken up with him because she's having to move away. He's not, he still hasn't made peace with that yet. And so uh, kind of the idea that I was coming with was maybe he, he's climbed up in a tree and he's looking at her window from across the street, right? And he's saying this line as he's up in the tree. And he's saying the line as if he's talking to her, but he's actually trying to come to terms with the situation himself that she's moving away. And if he loves her, he's going to have to let her move on, right? So in terms of my process for coming up with ideas, I start with the broad terms first, which again came to the situation of, do I want this character talking straight to a girl or do I want him talking to himself? And I thought about what kind of acting can I get with this performance? This is a very emotional performance. And do I want the audience to be concentrated with, oh, he's talking to this off-screen character. And what is this off-screen character thinking? And what is her reaction to what he has to say, right? It, it adds a lot of questions, right? Or because there's so many like sniffs and crying and talking and emotional performance, I want every eye in the audience to be on the rig, on the character. What is he thinking? What is he going through? What is he saying? And if I add an off-screen character that he's talking face-to-face -to, -face to, it kind of removes from that, in my opinion. So I thought to myself, let's do this where he's He's making peace with it, so he's pretending to talk to her so he can come to peace himself. And that's going to add a whole nother layer of acting on top of that. And so once I came up with that idea, it's just where, why, and how. So that's where you come up with 
a backstory for this character. That's where you come up with a subtext. That's where you come up with a situation. So I haven't fully fleshed out this idea, but I was playing with the idea of high school sweethearts. Her dad has to move away. And so they break up because she's having to move away. And so he is trying to make peace with that himself. And so he is watching her window from a tree and saying this line so that he can come to peace. And it has nothing to do with her other than it's a it's because of her, right? And so then once I've come up with that idea, that's when subtext comes into play. Now I've got that the idea. Now I'm like, okay, what is the subtext? When he says this line, what is he meaning? When he says this line, what is he meaning? Yes, Madison, what's the idea? I want to hear the things. But that's whenever subtext come in, comes into play, and once sub, subtext is into play, then you get your acting choices. Then you get all of those lovely little things. What if the van is driving down the road? That's possible. Like, if I want clarity, yeah. Like, if I want, I mean, there's already a cute little van here. <laughs> I mean, if I wanted to really set up the shot, I could make this, you know. Again, that's why I was bringing this into Maya as well, is I'm trying to figure out composition, like, previs-wise. Like, if there's a tree, right? And character is in the tree can I get a good composition which honestly the tree is probably gonna be not super useful for me and it's I'm probably gonna be better off literally just grabbing some branches ma making them on my own and then making them uh, fit the composition that I'm thinking but If we have character, you know, maybe he's in the tree. This is honestly a decent focal length. He could be like, you know, on the left third, standing here on the tree, staring. And you can have little bitty car being like, dun, 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 dun. And then it drives away, which I'd have to make a better scene. I'd have to get a background, but I kind of like that idea. Because it's kind of like insinuating, like, if I love you, I'm going to have to let you move on. And then, you know, you hear the door shut and drive. That, that could be really fun. And again, that's subtext. That's coming up with specific acting choices, idea choices, once you've come up with the big overarching idea. So now kind of my goal is like, I like to find general camera angles. I like to find general things that I'm going to do with my shot before I come up with subtext and acting just because having a scene and a scenario and a feel for a shot oftentimes help me come up with a character. It helps me find references and come up with ideas that pop into my head based off of what the shot feels like. So that's kind of what I'm going for right now. Like, I think this is pretty fun. Like I'm already starting to get ideas of what, could be happening what the character could be doing or thinking just by seeing this so yeah that's kind of the idea i'm going with there's a lot of fun stuff going on with our new rig in the future uh, i believe we're planning to do one two three four four we're going to try to do about five promo shots we're going to do some promo images we're going to do some hot snazzy renders um, we're going to be doing some rig breakdowns for social media and we're planning on putting in the finish, po final polishing touches on the rig within the next few weeks. And hopefully the rig will be for sale by end of the year, first of next year. So that's kind of our plan deadline. Hopefully this was an interesting stream. I kind of just wanted it to be more chill. Uh, next week we should be starting up critiques again, and then on Saturday we are going to have the awesome Q&A on Cana Bridge of Spirits with me and Hunter Schmidt. So, does anybody have any questions or anything like that before I finish up the stream?
If not, I'll probably call it here. It's been a solid hour and a half stream. Uh, not as long as usual, but it's been a long day at work, fairly tired, and this is kind of my break week. So thank you guys for showing up. Hope you guys have a great week. Uh, I believe Cynthia will be streaming tomorrow. Madison might be streaming at a later time on Friday because she's working now. And so she is not able to hit her Friday time de deadline. So watch out for whenever Madison streams Friday if she streams. No stream on this Saturday. Next Saturday will be the stream with Hunter. So thank you guys for showing up. I'll see you guys later.